Hi everybody, I'm Terry Stiles. Welcome to Oxford News This Week. This week, we need a hospital and parents are concerned for teachers' safety. All that and more, the Oxford News begins right now. Even though the state says no, Oxford Township Supervisor Jack Curtis is still in the fight. Based on the emergency services needed on November 30th, Curtis believes that a 20 to 30 minute ride to the nearest hospital is unacceptable. Last week, Curtis delivered an impassioned plea via Zoom to the Certificate of Need Commission of Michigan to convince them that the state standard methodology should be reconsidered. Oxford Fire Chief Pete Schultz also spoke, stating he wholeheartedly supports Supervisor Curtis in stating Oxford should be approved for a 117 to 121 bed hospital. Jim? Thank you, Terry. Members of the community and the Oxford Community School Board spent four hours last week at a special board meeting in which included a two-hour closed session meeting. Parents mostly discussed their concerns, in particular, of the well-being of not only the students, but also the teachers. Some parents asked about the policies that were in place in hand, uh, said the school staff from dealing with disruptive students. Steve St. Juliana, the father of Hannah St. Juliana, one of the students who died on the October high school mass shooting on the 30th, questioned the district uh, decision to not have photos for the four victims as part of a memorial. He acknowledged the district is trying to minimize triggers for the students. He suggested that the district poll the entire high school student body and staff to see what they thought uh, about having the photos. Jill Lamont, assistant superintendent of the student services, made the presentation at the district February 23rd safety meeting. She discussed the district's continued use of such things as clear backpacks, student ID checks, a private and public security presence, therapy dogs, and what the district is looking into for the future. Terry. The Addison Township Public Library was approved to receive $500,000 from the House of Representatives for the fiscal year of 2022. The request was submitted last year by Congresswoman Elisa Slotkin. It is expected that President Joe Biden will sign the bill in the coming weeks and the funds will be allocated within six months. The money is part of an ongoing campaign to raise funds to build a new library, which will be owned by the community in the community of Addison Township. Jim? Thank you, Terry. Police recognition, Oxford Police Chief Mike Sowald honored officers Tim Ellis and James Irish for their outstanding service with the police department. Ellis was recognized for handling an unruly and violent domestic incident calling Lake Orion alongside the LOPD chief, Harold Rossman. The suspect allegedly chased his fiance into the bathroom with a machete. Ellis noticing blood on the blade and the suspect's hands, both Ellis and Rossman held the suspect until the backup arrived to arrest him. Then Ellis had to wrestle the suspect after they managed to get free uh, from their handcuffs. Ellis sustained injuries in his hand, knee, and shoulder area as a result of this incident. Irish was recognized for his traffic safety prowess in 2020 and 2021, stopping 3,183 uh, violations, making 99 misdemeanor and felony arrests removing 48 intoxicated drivers from the Oxford traffic area. Officer Irish has also been recognized for Mothers Against Drunk Driving, MAD, the award in 2020, and will be awarded again in 2021. So while said, as of March 8th, Irish has stopped 313 violations, made 11 arrests, and removed eight intoxicated drivers from area streets and freeways. Terry. 
Last month, Village of Oxford manager Joe Medora presented to Council the Village Capital Improvement Plan for the next five years. The plan inclu includes various upgrades to water, streets, and general maintenance within the village, including upgrading water mains and lines to fit state lead and copper rules. The plan also includes road paving and upgrades to Scripter Park. Additionally, the American Rescue Plan Act funds are expected to cover about 8% of the mandatory $4.3 million water line upgrades over the next 20 years. Medora suggests residents will see a $4 to $5 increase to the monthly water bill um, to provide water funds with more money to cover the upgrades. Most of the road paving will be done due to water main work. Jim? Several Pearl Street residents used the public comment period to tell the council about unruly neighbors and asked for a residential lighting ordinance. The residents described the neighbors shining bright lights into people's yards and windows, allegedly due to believing television antennas are being used to spy on him. Solwald said he looked into the concern and was unable to find the relevant ordinance at the time, voicing his subject support for the creation of such an ordinance. Guess you should get cable, Terry. Well, there are help wanted signs most everywhere. You got it. It's unusual to see one for the Township of Oxford. However, the Township is looking for a part-time code enforcement officer. To view qualifications for the position, go to the Township website. Deadline to apply is 5 p.m. Friday, March 25th. That's this week. Only qualified individuals will need to apply for the $20 to $25 an hour job. Um, note that it's not a benefit qualified position as it is part time. Jim? The pipes, the pipes are calling. Oxford watering holes really got a full of uh, pipe action, uh, bagpipes I'm talking about. St. Patrick's Day, the Oxford chap hosted a wonderful bagpiper named Kim Johnson. Troy resident has been actually playing bagpipes for well over 40 years. Johnson, who made her musical services available, uh, she's called the Michigan Bagpiper. Drew wild applause from the holiday revelers. Enjoy their frosty beverages and corned beef and cabbage at the tap. Uh, St. Patrick's Day would not be the same without a bagpiper. Aaron Gobra and the Celtic Knot hosted a band, Munson's Mill, again this year, which drew standing room only. It was nice to see the people out enjoying themselves in the crowd again, once again, enjoying St. Patrick's Day. Anyways, we'll have more coming back. Uh, Terry now will close the news out. I think Dave Kenny has another segment here. I'll have a bit of sports to chat about. All that and more coming up on this edition of Oxford News this week. <music> Welcome to Auto Talk. I'm Dave Kenny, and these stories are taken from Automotive News. General Motors this year is expected to discontinue two subcompact crossovers that were once among its top sellers, the Buick Encore and the Chevrolet Trax. GM will end production of both South Korea-built crossovers in August, said Sam Fiorani, Vice President of Global Vehicle Forecasting at Auto Forecast Solutions. Both crossovers overlap with slightly larger siblings within the subcompact segment, the Buick Encore GX and the Chevrolet Trailblazer, which went on sale in 2020. Instead of updating the subcompact crossovers, GM went a step further and addressed the shortcomings of these popular models, said Fiorani. With their longer wheelbases, the Encore GX and Trailblazer sport more rear seat room and more cargo space in a package that's only a few inches longer. GM spokeswoman Kelly Van Mayle did not directly confirm the end of the tracks or the Encore output. Chevrolet will continue to sell five crossovers and Buick will continue to sell four, she said. Both of the, uh, both the Trax and the Encore peaked at more than 100,000 in 2019 when the Trax ranked second and the Encore third in the subcompact sub crossover segment behind the top-selling Subaru Cross Trek. The Trax and Encore went on sale in the U.S. in 2013 and ranked high in the segment for several years. The Trax remained in the top four until last year when the Trailblazer became the number three uh, and outsold the tracks by more than 47,000 vehicles. 
And on the recall front, we've got two. Stellantis is recalling over 370,000 Ram and Dodge vehicles in the U.S. because of an issue with the electronic stability control warning light that can increase the risk of a crash. The recall includes 2021 to 2022 Dodge Durango SUVs, 2019 to 22 Ram 2500 pickups, and 2019 to 22 Ram 3500 chassis cab trucks with a gross vehicle weight rating below 10,000 pounds, NHTSA said. Stellantis said it was made aware by a supplier of an issue that causes the warning light not to activate if the system loses its throttle reduction capability. Although the defect does not disable electronic stability control, it can cause drivers to be unaware that their cars need servicing. The company said it was unaware of any related injuries or crashes. Owners will receive notification letters at the end of April and can bring their vehicles to dealerships to update the software. The recall also affects over almost 30,000 vehicles in Canada, over 1,000 vehicles in Mexico, and almost 8,000 outside North America, Stellantis said. And in our second recall, Ford Motor Company is recalling 157,306 F-150 pickups from the 2021 model year because of an inoperative windshield wiper motor that can cause the wiper to fail, according to NHTSA. There are no known accidents or injuries associated with the defect. Affected owners are expected to receive a letter April 18th notifying them of the issue. They can bring their vehicles to dealerships to replace the motor. Well, that's it for this edition of Auto Talk. I'm Dave Kenny, and we'll be right back. Do you love local sports? Whether it's Oxford High School or Parks and Rec, you can buy copies of each game. To purchase your copy, call us at 248-628-9658 or give us an email at manager at occtv.org or talk to us at the next game. Hopefully we'll see you there. Back in Oxford News this week, great to have you along with us. And yes, we do have some sports to uh, put a uh, wrap on here. Uh, obviously, uh, Becky Bannis, myself, and a few others are going to be out hitting the sports with uh, baseball and softball. Now, that's something I really haven't broadcasted. I'm looking forward. Becky said she's going to give me like a, a one, two, three course on that. So anyways, finishing up the uh, basketball, obviously we're in March here. The Oxford High School boys basketball team had a full run at the MHSAA District 4 playoff at Division High School, making their way through the play-in past the tournament host and coming up just a bit short in the finals uh, the week against the Flint Kearsley Hornets on Monday. That was on the 7th. Both teams failed to secure a buy-in through their regular season play and played each other to go further. The Wildcats outpaced the Hornets to the season of 71-65. Uh, to 65. However, uh, victory, uh, was, they lost the Wildcats and had to face down the Davison Cardinals on Wednesday. That was on the 9th of March. That game uh, came down to the wire, but Oxford was able to secure a 46-45 win to move on with the Davison take care. Uh, the Davison took care of their boys, made their third district finals appearance in the six years uh, in the 2021 MHSAA Division I champions, Grand, Grand Blank Bobcats on Friday, March 11th, and Oxford put up a valiant effort in that contest, outmatched though on all sides of the ball. Grand Blank came through and they lost that game. Uh, Grand Blank 66, Oxford 32. The Oxford boys varsity finished their season 10 and 13. Not too bad of a record, they're doing better. While failing to win the OAA blue and proceed further to the pro season, the team came far again this season. Also another story here, not really uh, a sports story, but we say extra, extra. The Oxford High School Theater back in action with the musical, originally the 1992 movie, uh, yeah, movie uh, Newsies. Uh, the Oxford Wildcat uh, drama team put that together for a production this past week. Uh, again, it was uh, quite well received by everybody in the audience. Uh, again, Oxford High School Theater production, uh, since this is the first production they've had since the uh, shooting on the 30th. Uh, through there were challenges of getting the students to feel comfortable coming back to the high school, let alone performing on stage. The cast found common, commonality with the against all odd situations, their characters, that what they went through. Congratulations to them. Again, not really a, a sports story there, but we want to say congratulations to them on that behalf. Another uh, school-related story, Oxford High School first robotics competition, uh, Team 2137. The Oxford Robocats competed last Friday and Saturday at the first of Michigan Rochester District event. Stony Creek High School, two students, uh, Alexandra Foster and Wyatt Ashley. 
one on the dean's list. Uh, the team made it to the quarterfinals with their robot. Students who obtain the dean list award status are examples of student leaders who have uh, brought an increased awareness and first of its mission to their communities and teams' winnings. Winning this award now qualifies Foster and Ashley to compete against other Dean List Award winners from other district and regional events at the Michigan State Championship at Saginaw Valley. That will take place next month, April 13th through the 16th. Out of the 39 teams that competed in that robotic competition at Rochester Team 2137 placed 18th in the qualifying matches and during the alliance uh, selection were chosen by the captain by a number seven alliance team one, the juggernauts of Pontiac. They both chose team 8728, the Arag, Ara, I'm not saying it right, Aragonauts, I guess, from Troy, uh, competed with them on their alliance. The alliance two quarterfinals matches ended with losses. Some things happened that were out of control. According to Preston Coupler, the primary driver for the team, I feel like there's a lot of room for improvement. I hope we are able to make changes. Uh, the Oxford Robocats next district qualifying competition will be at Belleville High School. Um, again, that's coming up within the week. We'll have news about their uh, competition there. Anyways, that's kind of a mixed bag of sports and robotics and drama all wrapped into one. We're going to be back, I guess, one more segment with Dave Kenny, and then also Terry and I will wrap up the news. Looking forward to uh, going out there with Becky Bannis and doing some baseball and softball sometime in April. I'm Jim Hughes for Sports. We'll be back with more on Oxford News this week. <music> Welcome to Science in the News. I'm Dave Kenney, and this story is taken from New Scientist. Spiders that hunt in packs use web vibrations to coordinate their attacks, allowing them to kill prey hundreds of times larger than they could on their own. Of the 50,000 known spider species, just one or two hunt as a group with thousands of individuals spread across webs that can span several cubic meters. When prey insects land on their web, the spiders synchronize their attack, moving as one to catch animals up to 700 times heavier than an individual arachnid. To better understand how this works, researchers led by Raphael Jensen at the University of Toulouse in France disturbed the webs of two colonies of Anolosimus eximius, a social spider species. They mimic the movement of prey by creating vibrations in different parts of the web while filming the spider's movements. Jensen and his team then analyzed the movements frame by frame, finding that the spiders pause their motion towards prey and restart it at the same time. The stopping time corresponded with the amount of noise in the web according to computer models of the spider's motion. The arachnids only stayed still for as long as they had time in order to distinguish the vibrations caused by their fellow spiders from those of the prey. It's kind of like when there are lots of people talking in a crowded room and then there's this other noise, like a telephone that rings, and everyone has to hush to find the source of the noise, says Jensen. Of course, the louder the telephones ring, the less people have to be quiet to find the phone, and it's the same thing with these social spiders. Depending on the size of the prey and the vibrations that the prey creates on the web, the spiders have to be more or less quiet and still in order to localize the prey without getting disturbed by the vibrations of other spiders that are moving around, he says. After the spiders come to a collective halt, the group starts moving when one or two individuals become mobile and then there's being no sign of a leader among the pack. 
I don't know how it works exactly, but when one of them moves, it sets them all moving, he says. It's really a snowball effect. Synchronized hunting means the spiders can catch butterflies, grasshoppers, and other flying insects which struggle to free themselves from the web. The webs of these social spiders aren't sticky, so the spiders have to act quickly to avoid their prey escaping. The stop-start approach does extend the hunt, but it may be time well spent. If they all arrive at the same time, there's a strength in numbers that's really beneficial compared to a disordered arrival of individual spiders that get lost in the web along the way. There's a clear advantage of synchronization despite the cost of the waiting time, says Jensen. The spiders also synchronize when they eject an immobilizing glue from their behind legs and bite their prey, injecting a venom, and it's lunchtime for the spiders. Well, that's it for the Science and the News. I'm Dave Kenny. Hi, welcome back to Oxford News This Week, and this is about a wrap, wouldn't you say? It's a wrap. It's wrapped <laughs> up. Yeah, another edition. God, you, you do not know the work that goes into doing the Oxford News This Week program. I mean, a lot of effort. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> we learn English. We learn news. We learn how to do electronics. I mean, you want to learn something. You're a student. There's no Specs Howard anymore, okay? That's right. Come here, okay? Yeah, You're going to learn how to do come it. Come here and help us do the news. And Dan, we put Dan, uh, Dan. his wife's through the ringer. Um, but if you want to see our news, you can get it on Charity Channel 191, at t Channel 99. You can find us on Oxford Community Television, Facebook, YouTube, or Rumble. You can also find I don't, us through uh, Roku. How do you get Roku? That's why I don't Roku. understand that part. you got to have a smart TV. Do you have a smart TV? I've been talking to it for a long time and it never answered <laughs> it me. So I don't. Smart. No, I don't know. It's, uh, so it's on a smart television? Yes. Oh, I don't have one, I don't yes. think. I got a TV that needs some education. I would also like to say, let's say a prayer for the Ukrainian uh, people. Uh, you know, that's something we haven't covered here on the news. And we, don't, we try not to cover national news on our own local news, but right now um, they, they need all the. Yeah, well, I told, I told you that of, down where I live, we go to, I mean, yeah, real fast, there's a, they have a Ukrainian cultural center. Yeah. And uh, we decided to go there. They, they had like a luncheon every Friday. They've nice. been do, I guess they've been doing this for years on Fridays. Wow. But, you know, obviously people are looking more into it now. Yeah. And uh, it's a reasonable price. You throw them a few extra bucks and they, yeah. it helps out a great cause. And I tell you, whoever cooks that stuff, I don't know how they're making money on it. Because it's, it's, it's like what, what kind of stuff do they have? it's a buffet line, but it's like wow. the best buffet like wedding you've wow. ever been to. Every wow. Friday between 11 and 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And that's down in Warren on the Ryan. Ukrainian Cultural Center? Yeah, not the church. It's, your, yeah, it's the Ukrainian Cultural Center. It's just south of 10 Mile. Uh, you can make reservations. And then you even have a punch card. If you get, We've already got two oh, punches. Oh, fun. I get 10 punches, it's a free meal, I guess. So. <laughs> A anyway, free meal for that thirteen dollar. But yeah. if, if you can't make it down there, you might want to look into just sending them some funding. To yeah, for them. terrible things Food's going on there. It's not cheap right now. Right. Um, and they're doing a good uh, service for a good cause. So anyhow, we're going to thank uh, Dan Weiss in the back. We already yep. kind of put a thank on there. We thank Joe for editing this thing. Terry Styles yep. for doing the rewrite. Uh, I'm Jan Jamie for doing the script. Uh, or Jim, yeah. We <laughs> should thank uh, the Charter Township of Oxford. CJ puts a lot of these stories together. So too does the Oxford leader. Okay. Oh gosh, we've got to be done. I'm Jim Hughes, Terry Styles uh, for Dan Weiss in the back. He's ready to close this little puppy out. We'll see you again next week. God willing, be careful, be safe. We'll see you next week on Oxford News this week. Bye -bye. Don't go away. <laughs>